All right, so what we're going to cover is um, we're going to cover logarithmic differentiation. And really, logarithmic differentiation is algebraic simplification through logarithms and then taking the derivative second. So here are the common the, you know, the rules of logarithms that, you know, the, the, log, <laughs> the log base b of a product, log base b of a quotient, and the log base b of an a, of a expression to a power. So we know the log base B of A times B, capital A times capital B, is going to be the log base B of capital A plus the log base B of capital B. Uh, quotient is going to be, you know, the subtraction. And, and the real benefit of logarithms is what you can do with powers is you can pull them out and make a coefficient. So the log base little b of capital A raised to the C power is going to be C times the log of A. All right, so... Um, Using these rules, I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you how to take some derivatives, it's maybe slightly easier. And um, the last couple examples is really where the logarithmic differentiation shines because some functions you can't take the derivative of unless you simplify using logarithms. So I erase this and I will set up a couple examples and uh, we will we will go through those. All right, so I'm going to start with something that we know we can just use the um, the product rule to be able to find its derivative. But I want to show you how the, uh, um, this logarithmic differentiation actually does work. So what we do is we take the, the natural log, or any log base b that you choose. We, we tend to like the natural log because it's less writing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to natural log both sides of this expression. Now this right-hand side, I have you know, the, the logarithm of a product, which means I can expand this to be you know, the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of the sine of x. So, so far, no, no, no uh, calculus yet. All we did is just uh, uh, took the natural log of both sides and we simplified the right-hand side. So now comes the calculus. We're going to take the derivative of both sides of the equation. Knowing that the left-hand side, is, you're going to need implicit differentiation because this expression has uh, the, the, uh, the dependent variable y. So the derivative of the natural log of y is going to be 1 over y multiplied by, well, the derivative of y, so y prime. Now over here, there's no y's in there, so this derivatives are the way you expect. So uh, the derivative of the natural log of x squared is going to be, well, the derivative of the natural log of something is going to be 1 over that something, times the derivative of, you know, that something, so times 2x. Plus, now the derivative of the natural log of the sine of x is going to be 1 over the sine of x times the derivative of the sine of x, which is going to be cosine of x. So we'll simplify this. Uh, the x's will cancel, so this is going to be 2 over x. I know I this is cosine over sine, which would be the cotangent of x, but um, I, I want to leave it in this expanded form, so uh, something's going to simplify in a second here, and, and you might not see it yet. So cosine of x over sine of x. All right, so... What I have is 1 over y times y prime, and what I want to do is, um, you know, I'm trying to isolate for y prime. So what I can do is I can take this y on the bottom, I can multiply it over here, so this is going to be, you know, y times this expression to get rid of that 1 over y. So now y prime is going to be y times this. Notice that uh, uh, y, we actually have an expression for it. It's up here, y is x squared sine of x. So if I rewrite this as y prime is going to be x squared sine of x multiplied by, you know, 2 over x plus cosine of x all over the sine of x. And if you distribute to simplify this, um, when I multiply, you know, this factor times this, we can see the x is going to cancel, so I'm going to get uh, 2x sine x. And when I multiply it to the second term, uh, the sine of x's are going to cancel, so this is going to be plus x squared uh, cosine of x. Now I'm using this example because it's, it's a classic reason to, to, to show why it works. Because if I looked at this expression here, I would not be using logarithmic differentiation. I would just quickly do a do a, a product rule, you know, derivative of the first, which is two x, times the second, which is sine of x, plus the first, which is x squared, times the derivative of the second, which is cosine of x, and then we would be done.
But the goal of this is to show you that, you know, you can logarithmically simplify, still take its derivative implicitly, and still get to the, uh, the same answer for your derivative. So I'll show you in my second example as I, uh, I'll erase this. So I want to take um, the derivative uh, using logarithmic differentiation here because this could be a very tedious problem going the other way. You know, I have a radical, so it's a, you know, it's a, uh, it's a chain rule. I have a product rule that's also mixed with a quotient rule. So this would be really big and messy. So what we can do is we can use logarithmic differentiation to, to do this. So I'm just going to natural log both sides. So the natural log of this side, the natural log of this side. What I know I can do with natural logs is um, this is a power of one half, so I know this is the same thing as one half power. So I can pull that coefficient out front, so this is going to be one half the natural log of this expression, so x squared cosine of x all over e dx. Now, using uh, you know those rules of logs to you know continue to expand this thing. I know that the, this is going to be the log of the quotient, so it's going to be the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. And um, also, this is going to be a product, so it's going to be the log of the first plus the log of the second. So when we're done here, this is going to be one half times, you know, the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of cosine of x minus the natural log of e to the x. Now, this thing simplifies. Natural log of e to the x is just going to be x, so we can write that as x. Um, now, uh, th all the algebra is done. We're just going to take the derivative. So, you know, the derivative of this side, the beauty is it's going to be the same thing. So the derivative of the natural log of something is going to be 1 over that something. So this is 1 over y times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be y prime. Now, when I take the derivative of this thing, I know that this is a constant. So I could leave that constant out front and just take the derivative of this term by term. Uh, actually, I, I'm, I'm going to expand this. I forgot, I forgot to do this piece. You technically don't have to, but the log of x squared is actually going to be 2 times the natural log of x. So it makes it even easier to take its derivative. So um, pulling out that 2, the derivative of the natural log of x is going to be 1 over x. And you notice you've got the same thing if you did the natural log of x squared. Uh, plus uh, the natural log of the cosine of x is going to be 1 over the cosine of x times the derivative of the cosine of x, which is going to be minus sine of x. And the derivative of, uh, of uh, uh, negative x is going to be minus 1. So we can clean this up a little bit. This is negative cotan, no, negative tangent, and this is going to be 2 over x. So this is 1 half times 2 over x uh, minus the tangent of x uh, minus 1. Now the last thing I have to do is I have to multiply both sides of this expression times y. So, you know, this is going to be y times this, just like we did before. So 1 over y times y prime. So y prime is going to be y, which is the original expression, times this thing. So this is going to be 1 half. I'm going to put the y here. So, you know, y times, you know, 2 over x minus tangent of x uh, minus 1. But we know that this y is this expression, so I can rewrite this as the square root of x cubed cosine of x all over e dx. All right, so the last two examples, again, I said is, is really where uh, logarithmic differentiation shines because I'm going to show you uh, a function where you have to use it in order to be able to do it. Now, i got to be a little careful. I'm sure there are other methods out there that you could do this, but in the Calc 1 class, this is how it's done. So our function is going to be y is equal to, um, let's just do x and the x. I was going to get clever with it, but let's just keep it kind of basic. So y is going to be x raised to the x. Now, um, this doesn't have a, a, a family of functions that you would expect because, you know, it looks kind of like a polynomial because I have a base of x. It also looks like an exponential because I have an exponent of x. So really, it's kind of two families at the same time. So there's no rule to do it. So the way we do this is we are going to, you know, do logarithmic differentiation. And we will um, 
break apart those two families. So, so um, what I can do with logarithmic differentiation is uh, we're going to take this x and put out front. So this is x times the natural log of, of x, which is y. Now we take the derivative, so algebra is done. Uh, the derivative of this is going to be 1 over y times y prime, just like before. And um, now uh, this is our product, so uh, derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second, which is the natural log of x, plus the first, which is going to be x, times uh, the derivative of the natural log of x, which is going to be 1 over x. Simplify that right-hand side. This is the natural log of x plus 1. Now, notice again we have, you know, 1 over y times y prime. So y prime is going to be, you know, y times an expression just like it was before. And knowing that y was our x to the x, so y prime. y is x raised to the x times the natural log of x plus 1. So really kind of a classic um, uh, logarithmic differentiation problem where in Calc 1 you need this method in order to, so in order to do this. So um, what I'll do is I'll do one more uh, example that really kind of follows the same uh, uh, lines as this. So if we do a D, what I want to I want to do is y raised to the x is equal to uh, x raised to the y. Now it's very similar to what we had before because you know I have a variable that's a base, I have a, a power that a, a power that's also a variable as well, but they're mixed. You know this is an this is an implicit expression as opposed to the previous ones where which were explicitly solved for y. So what I have to do now is I'm just gonna you know I have to do logarithmic differentiation. So um, I'm gonna natural log this side, and I'm gonna natural log this side. Which allows me to use, you know, property three. Allows me to take exponents and turn them into coefficients. So this is x natural log of y, and this is going to be y times the natural log of x. So now our, you know, our algebra is done. We can finally start taking some derivatives here. So both of these are product rules. So derivative of the first, which is going to be one, times the second, plus the first, which is going to be x, times the derivative. Now we've taken the derivative of the natural log of y a couple times, so this is going to be one over y times y prime, or if you just want to go y prime over y, that would have been fine as well. Uh, similar here, derivative of the first, well, be careful. Remember, every time you take the derivative of y, since it's a dependent variable, it has to be followed by its derivative. So even though here, like, the derivative of x is 1, over here the derivative of y is still 1, but you still have to multiply it by the derivative of y, so times y prime. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Now remember natural log of x, this is only an independent variable, so this is going to be times 1 over x. And let's let's clean it up a little bit. So um, natural log of y plus, um, let's say, x y prime all over y is going to be y prime and natural log of x plus uh, y over x. Now, since we're trying to find the derivative, I'm trying to solve this, you know, this equation for y prime. And what we have is I have y primes on two sides of the equations. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the y primes on one side, maybe I'll say the left side, and I'll put all the terms that don't have a y prime on the other side. So we'll send this uh, y prime natural log of y to the left side. We'll send this natural log of y to the right side. So um, this is going to be y prime, well, let's say x y prime all over y minus this y prime natural log of x. Um, we're still going to have this, which is going to be y over x, but I have to subtract this term, so minus the natural log of y. Since, uh, the reason why I did this, since both things have a y prime, I can factor out that y prime, which will allow me to isolate it. So this will be x over y minus natural log of x is going to be uh, y over x minus the natural log of y. So now what I can do is I can just divide both sides by by, by this uh, factor. So y prime is going to be y over x minus natural log of y all divided by x over y minus the natural log of x. Let's make sure that's a frame. Now a lot of... Uh, uh, 
books or programs might not accept this because it's complex fractions. They have fractions inside fractions. So what you can do if you want to simplify this is we could just uh, multiply uh, top and bottom by, well, I have to multiply this top to get rid of the x by x. And I also have to multiply the bottom by y to get rid of the y. So what I can do is I can multiply both by x, y. So what we get here is, um, for this one, the x will cancel. So I'll have y times y. So this would be y squared minus x, y natural log of y all over. Now when I multiply here, the y will cancel. So this would be x squared minus um, x, y natural log of x. And that does it for uh, logarithmic differentiation. I'll see you next time.